Australia is blessed with vast wilderness areas in the north, so come with me and we'll explore these remote places they're hardly ever visited. And they're full of adventure because we're in the wild. Beautiful. Nice and friendly. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sandpipers swirl above Crab Island off the northwestern tip of Cape York Peninsula. This crescent shaped island is the most significant breeding ground for the flatback turtles. Its scenic tranquility belies the incredible danger these turtles face when ashore on Crab Island. For the crocodile is king here. Imprints in the sand tell Kim Sheridan and I a terrible tale. Wow, look at these. There's got to be several crocs here going to town. This is like a war zone. This guy's been feeding. See all the babies running down straight to them? And up here, I mean, this can't be one croc. This, this would be a couple of crocs coming in there. He's been doing a lot of swinging around here and all the baby tracks are leading straight down to him. Look at how few got past. These crocs have been having a real banquet last night. This little baby turtle has escaped. He's run around the back of the uh, croc and he's off, off to the water. From here on, no tracks. Up there, dozens and dozens. So this is where life ended for the baby turtles. I've got to film this. I mean, no one has ever filmed a crocodile taking baby turtles, and this only happens at night. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to order an infrared lamp, come back here, and we'll try and film this all at night. This is spooky. And I mean, this is the daytime. Imagine when we get back at night with those infrared lamps. Oh, it's going to be really, really spooky. Uh, ben Crop here. What's the most powerful infrared lamp that you've got? Oh, it works to 50 metres. Yeah, I'll, I'll feel happy about that. Uh, but I need it uh, as soon as possible. When can you send it? Hmm, two weeks. OK, that'll be all right. I'll give you the address to send it and pay by credit card. We check out the marine life around Crab Island. Corrine and Tony Barton come with me. My son Adam is driving. Hi, turtle. Big shovel nose. That's an eagle ray, just there. Spotted eagle ray. I'm using a pole camera. It allows me to get up close and personal with these sea creatures. This is nothing. Two years ago at this time, we had a tiger shark chew up the dinghy. Lots of scary stuff. Ben, I've never seen such a variety of fish in such a short space of time. This ray has lost its tail to a shark. We're coming up on the stingray now. You can see the trail that's left when it's feeding. That's a leopard shark. Unlike its namesake, it's harmless, slow, and easy to approach. Closer now. 
This is one dangerous creature. The pole camera allows me to get in close without any risk from its terrible spike. Uh, that ray is what we call a, I think it's a white spotted ray. Uh, we usually call it a bull ray, and that's the same one that killed Steve Irwin. See, that's its defensive mode. It will sit on the sand, stir it up a little bit, and if you get over the top of it, whack. If I was swimming with the camera, this is what would happen. Wow, that was graphic. I would have been stabbed. The deadly spike is halfway along the tail, 12 centimetres long. The turtle does not see us as a threat. We don't look like a croc or a tiger shark. Well, there you go. In 10 minutes' time, we've seen a dozen turtles, tawny shark, shovelnose shark, a few rays, and next, hopefully, a dugong. Looks like a dugong, about 50 metres to the left. Beautiful. Nice and friendly, isn't he? Get right up close to him. on the back. It could be barnacles, could be mating. Wow, I can't believe he's this close. Yeah, he's pretty tame, probably because they haven't been hunted out here. Doesn't seem to mind us following him at all. A flock of pelicans roost here on Crab Island. And some are mating. Those females wishing to avoid this sex have a cute way of doing so. Crab Island is alive with birds, and many migrate here from as far afield as China. In our two weeks' wait, we witness the primal ritual of the flatbacks nesting. We've come at a time when the nesting is nearing an end and overlapping with the beginning of hatching. A 30-knot nor'easter creates a mini sandstorm. It must be hard on the turtle's eyes. I'm surprised our cameras survived. Flatback turtles nest only in northern Australia. They're not endangered, for the female population may be as high as 10,000. They get their name from a relatively flat shell with turned up edges and measure up to a metre long. They lay about 50 eggs. That's fewer than other marine turtles, and incubation takes six weeks. Mortality is high, especially from pigs. 
Here at Crab Island, there is no pig predation, but crocodiles do take a heavy toll. I'm surprised to see those turtles nest in the mid-afternoon and back in the water before the day's end. This is Tuffy. Hey. This flat-backed turtle has been eaten by a crocodile or a shark. I see lemon sharks cruising the island close in shore. They're too small to take an adult turtle. Out wider prowls a big tiger shark. Its favourite diet is turtle. Tossed around like a rag doll, the turtle is doomed. When the tiger takes a brief break, a tawny shark moves in for a quick bite. When the tiger returns, the tawny shark quickly leaves, for there is a pecking order among sharks. What I'm seeing is so primeval in all its savagery. Being a reptile, the turtle will stay alive until the last bite. Sadly, that's the way of life for a turtle. Here, Sharky, Sharky, Sharky. They do a couple of little passes like this first, and he comes inside it like that. Dean Crop loves shark wrangling, and what better an opponent to tease than the nasty tiger? Come on, give me it back. Give me it back. Feet. Coming in. He wants a bit of it now. Natalie King has no trouble snapping her photos, but we do have problems taking underwater photos with a pole camera and avoid having it smashed by the thrashing shark. <laughs> he just bit right onto the deck. That's the big one. Just don't get your feet caught in the rope. Ugh. Ugh. Far out. <laughs> While giving Tuffy a beach walk, we see the aftermath of yesterday's drama. This could be the turtle that the tigers ate. Well, it could be the crocodiles we saw last night. Yeah, poor turtles have a pretty bad time here. They got the tiger sharks and the crocodiles. <laughs> now that's a big shark and it's cruising awfully close to the shore. We cancel any thoughts of a swim. Look at all those turtle tracks. There was some heavy nesting last night. Oh, poor girl. 
Oh my I wonder how long she's been here. Is she alive still? Yeah, she's alive. We'll have to drag her down to the beach. Come on, girl. When nesting is heavy, some turtles accidentally die. Get a run. One can be buried by another, digging her hole, or tumble in a hole upside down, like this one. That's Rowena Horn, helping Tony and I save one lucky turtle. Over. Right, there you go, girl. Get a push. She's exhausted. Oh. Heavy? Yeah. She doesn't have any energy. Yeah, she's okay. She's gone. We long for a swim. The crocs and sharks have stopped that. As I take freedom to a safer place, we see birds working some bait fish, and that means tuna below. Hopefully, Kim has dinner on. Nice. Tuna for dinner. Wow. The next catch is an unwanted shark. Dean needs to retrieve the lure so he can get back into fishing, but that is not so simple. Adam slips a noose over its tail so they can haul it on board where it's easier to get the lure out. I'm taking freedom to the closest coral reef at Booby Island. It was once a famous castaway refuge and had, in a cave, Australia's second official post office. After Sydney, would you believe? Dean takes his underwater camera and reveals a remarkable world below. A sweet lip invites a cleaner fish to work deep inside its jaws. Food can be found under the sand, if you have a nose for it. Butterfly fish do like Christmas tree worms, but they have to be quick. It's a wonderful coral garden of colourful little fish. Asleep behind a rock is the only giant, a leopard shark. There is so much activity on a coral reef. Fish of so many different shapes forage and caught in a blaze of colour.
Cuttlefish have three hearts. This system requires so much energy the cuttlefish literally wears out. Before its short life ends, it lays its eggs deep inside the coral branches. Dean's off to spear a fish for dinner, if he can keep it from the hungry reef sharks. They appear to be agitated, snapping at passing fish. It's a mackerel. A nice dinner, but not for us, it seems. Dean checks behind him in case more sharks are rushing in. With half the dinner gong, he lets the shark have the rest. Only reef sharks can do this without coral scratches. Dean is fascinated by feeding sharks. He's tied a speared sweet lip to the coral to watch a small reef shark with an appetite larger than it can swallow. A much larger pregnant reef shark should easily swallow this fish. It's right down her throat, but she's having difficulty sawing through the rope. A moray eel has patiently waited for its turn. Dean's holding his camera in his right hand and the fish in his left to film a tug of war with the eel. That's difficult. Dean can't see how close his fingers are to those sharp teeth. minutes to pull up. It's, I can't believe how big it is. I thought it was a shark. Finally, Dean catches dinner. Yeah, turn him around. <laughs> a dog tooth tuna weighing 70 kilos. Can you just stick your hand in there, Adam, and get the lure out? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> a fierce storm has us running for shelter. 30 knot winds give us a rough passage to a sheltered creek close to Crab Island. I want to check out the croc population here. 
for I feel that the ones we see at Crab Island probably grew up here. We run up river where it's all mangroves and mud. Just around here are some mud banks. We could see a croc here. There's one, there's one, see? Crocs like to bask on a mud bank. It gives a slippery slide to the water below. About one o'clock, there's one just up on the point there. He's getting ready. Yeah, there he goes. Another bank coming up, just up ahead. Keep an eye. Like an open window, it's his way of keeping cool. Crocodiles are very territorial. Each has its own space along the creek bank, and if another intrudes, it will be chased out. You've got a golden eye. You know, we've seen a croc about every 100 metres along this creek. Now, you really wonder just how many are in here. Look! Oh, yes, that's something big. Yeah, it's a croc and it's got something. Whatever it is, it's big, yeah, flashing around. It's a pig, yeah, it's definitely a pig. I'm going to cut the motor. Oh, that's ugly. See how it's thrashing the pig on the surface? It has to do that. It has to break it up, break off every bone, make it all mushy so it can pull things apart and swallow it. It can't chew like a shark. It can't tear things apart. See another croc coming in? His head's just on the surface there. Now, it, it's going to want part of the spoils, but that, that could be a fight. It's a smaller one too, so I can't imagine it's going to be game enough. What these crocs learn here plays well when they swim out to Crab Island. This is a good one. Probably another trevally. Come on. Come on, up you come. Here you go. Another Trevally. Come here. Yeah. He's only little. The fishing is great. Barracuda and Trevally are not good table fish, but that's okay. We want these fish to feed some hungry giant groper waiting at the back of my boat. Dean's looking forward to the action of groper wrangling this time. Hey guys, there's two really big groper down here, just off the back of the boat. <laughs> He's quick too. <laughs> so quick. I didn't see him coming. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> You're right. Just stand behind the rope, otherwise you'll take your leg and everything. I'll let him really get this one into his mouth. There it is. Come on. Come here. Come on. <laughs> Tony Shark. Woo! Oh. Oh. He's a lot, he's stronger. So much stronger than the uh, groper. Oh. Come on, over here. Yeah. Oh. He's a good size one too, it's seven feet at least. Still got a bit left. Here, jump around here. Oh, come on. Could almost give him a kiss if he came any closer. There we go. Oh, now he's got it. Oh. <laughs> we'll let the groper have it. Where is he? There he is. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Look at the size of him. He's, he's like from that end of the duckboard to, to up here somewhere. It's huge. There's an interesting wreck beached outside the creek. This is the Carpentaria lightship, and she was anchored about 70 miles to the northwest on Carpentaria Shoals. And she actually marked the gateway from the Timor Sea into the Torres Strait. Now, she broke free in a cyclone and drifted and washed ashore here, which was lucky for the uh, people living on board who had to light that lamp every night because uh, they all survived. But not so lucky on the other light ship off Cape Melville because in 1899, there was a category five cyclone, the worst in history, and it sunk 70 ships. And that light ship was on a very short chain. This is the actual winch here. And every time a great big swell came over, she would jerk up, bow down, and eventually nose underwater. The boat filled up and she sank and the people on board, a whole family drowned. It's sad about these nets. You know, they either break free or discarded from illegal or foreign vessels out in the Gulf. And they drift for ages. We call them ghost nets. And as they drift, they capture dolphins and dugong, turtles, fish, and eventually wash up on shore. And right along the Gulf here, there is absolutely masses of these nets strewn along the beaches. It wasn't a good life, you know, living on board these light ships. You were at the mercy of the sea. You couldn't run from cyclones. And you were literally rolling around on the high seas and not going anywhere. There's another wreck north of Crab Island, made in Taiwan. Close by, a tiny sand cave swarms with nesting terns. The tern chicks have not yet fledged and are at the peril of cruising sharks. The parent terns try to warn the chicks to go back to shore, but they keep on swimming. The Wyler Sharks group, now there are five, and they target the chicks.
Panic setzt in. The sharks, in their frenzy, beat themselves to get at the chicks. A remorseless suckerfish hangs on as the shark crashes to reach the water. The struggle is too much. The remora drops off and is left stranded on the sand. There are only a few chicks left. They seem unaware of what is happening to each one. Now there are two. This chick is the sole survivor. It's a never-ending predation on this lonely cay, a survival of the luckiest rather than the fittest, and the turn population prevails. We return to Crab Island and see the destruction caused by the storm. In the bay, we meet some Aborigines spearing. Jacko Blanco and George Manhattan are from the community at Mapoon. This sheltered bay is fringed with mangroves. I chance a brief swim to film the place where the crabs hide. If a croc appears, I too will disappear. We follow Jack and George on a hunt for mud crabs. All full of nipple, yeah. What by? Eat them solid little bugger. You'll be coming there. Yeah, you know? Them one here. They, 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 they pulling grown of them one. Ben, you seen these ones before? No. Like they've been cooked, you know? Yeah. You seen this one? No. That's the one there, Podge. Hey, Podge. Yeah. Brother, you've been talking about that. That's some New Guinea one, yeah? Yo, come brother. We get them New Guinea one. They, they come down. Like I said, I don't eat crab, but I like hunting. And, and old people, they they love it. I, I, my satisfaction come from when I take it back home for them old people, you know, mid to you. Feed the community. Yeah, we'll put this one back. He's a bit small. We'll get some more up here. Oh, George. Back in your hole, mate. Nepai, for day, good size bugger, this bugger. Good size. You look. When you tie crab to, you tie them mainly on the side here. Feel that that's you can can move this one. Eh? Trunk there, eh? Brother, uh, brother Podgy, he gonna dust him up there. He gonna rattle him up. Yeah, I find it very, very important for our for our custom for for the kids, you know, for not only us, not only our people, but for everyone, black, white, or whoever, you know, there's something here for them, you know, and the next generation. We gotta monitor this one. Jenny's go back for next generation. Jacko's mates call him Jack Sparrow. He big bugger too. What you do, you keep pushing him in the mud so he can't, this one, you move out. You keep pressure on him and you pull him out. Long as you know where, oh, he's, he's, yeah, he's he, he up on that thing now. Podge, he up on that. I get him by hand, you watch. As long as you know where they are, which, which, I need to worry where that other, yeah, because i got to feel how the nipper is and what, which way he's facing. It's kind of, yeah, which, which. 
Oh, this buggy. Yeah, yeah, I got him. I got him. Coming out, Ben. Look at this bugger. Watch. Oy. Here we go. Here we go. You wouldn't want to get bitten by one of these. I've been bitten a lot of times, Ben. True. Bro, yo. Not a nice feeling getting bitten by this bugger. Time that. Good touch. Good touch. Look, me. You got him. That's on them New Guinea one now. Red one. Yeah. Two, yeah. Two. You look. Two there. Oh, they very aggressive. Very aggressive. Very strong. Hey. <laughs> It's good. Now leave that, Jenny. Hey, bud. Thanks, Jack. You're selling me on the camera. <laughs> it's hard work. It's muddy. But I tell you what, at the end of the day, it's bloody satisfying. What goes in your jibba jibba, wonderful belly belly. You know, jibba. My bugger jibba and bugger go bugger. Look. Bro, him, yeah? You look, yeah. Oh, yeah. Him, there, you look. Hey, old fella, wait there. Wait there, come on. You can't eat mud. Can't eat mud, eh? Come here. Watch, watch, watch. Hey, you know. Crab Island certainly lives up to its name. Full. Go sleep now. Say, when we leave here, when we're hunting here, always come out and leave something for them spirits. The sacrificing. Aha, you got it. Hi, Ben. Yeah. Present for you. Good, Natalie. And you both it by the looks. Yes. <laughs> Check what's in it. <laughs> well, this is, ah, uh, yeah, this is what we want. That's the infrared lamp. Wow. Yeah, they do say the 50 metres, but yeah, I don't think so. If we can get 20 metres from the crocs with it, we'll, we'll get it. Excellent. Yeah, and no one's ever filmed it before. Okay, so it. hopefully, we'll get it. Dean, is this the camera you have That's it. This, uh, this camera's got infrared night vision, so along with this spotlight here, I'll get this, the two of them lined up. We should be able to see the crocodiles at night without spooking them. See how we go. On our return, we see a croc in its favourite place. Oh, Kim, here's a croc mark. Probably a bit over three metres long. Now, he would have been sitting here when the tide was in more, maybe early this morning, Maybe even waiting for the hatchlings to come down. But he'll be out here somewhere. Oh <laughs> a few hatchlings emerge on sunset. A little early, but fortunately for them, because the crocs aren't in position yet, and these babies will probably survive. As darkness closes in, Dean and I switch on our infrared lights. Crocs can't see this special light, nor can we, except through the camera. I'm apprehensive and suspicious of dark outlines of logs, hoping they don't move. Twin lights do. It's a croc. There's a croc going up the bank right here. They're everywhere. That is so spooky. I can see a little pair of eyes here. 
but counting them, there's like nine of them all the way up the beach here. They're waiting for the baby turtles. They're looking straight at us now. I'll tell you what, looks like some baby, baby turtle tracks up there. I think they're starting to come out. Look at the little head there. They're good little diggers. He's out. He's out. Hang on, there's another one just here. Little head coming up. That's awesome. Ocean's out there. Oh, there's another one coming up, right here. Oh, they're coming up everywhere. Dean, Dean, come here. Bring the camera over here. There's a whole lot of ghost crabs and they're waiting for the babies. It's like an army, an army waiting at the shore. It looks like a fight, they're fighting over a baby. I can't believe the strength of these crabs. I mean, they're, they're the same size as a baby and yet they just drag it away, no trouble. He's got away. Oh, Ray, Ray, he's got away. Beat the nasty crab. No, no. Oh, he's getting away. Turtle's going to the water. Crab's gonna get a hold. Lost him. Turtle's got away. We've got a nice Nice pair of blinking eyes just here, really close to us, actually only a few metres away. Oh, I think he's seen me. We're not getting close enough. We need to get much closer than that. They're, they're seeing us too easily. Yeah, and, they're, and they're scared. They're, they're running away before we get that close. I think it was a mistake in you know, picking the full moon. I mean, it felt a lot safer. We could see the crocodiles ahead of us, but they can see us a lot better. Maybe we need to wait for the, the moon to wane, darker yeah. night. Yeah. I think we need a black night, a really black night, and uh, then we'll be just shadows to, to the crocodiles. But. <laughs> we won't be able to see the crocodiles either. At all. And that's what makes it dangerous. We hope to capture the turtle predation this time, but it's going to be even spookier. Only Dean's powerful light can spot the crocs. I'm walking blind. That's seven crocs just visible now. Yeah, just visible in that direction. I haven't looked back there yet. I can see little sharks coming right up in the shallows here, right up next to the shore. See their dorsal fin come out and then gone again. Here they come. These babies are coming down everywhere. He's got another one. Oh, he's got another one again. 
let him throw it back in his mouth. Straight down the throat. He's got to turn his mouth right onto the side to scoop it up off the sand. We've got to really get within about 15 metres you know, to get a decent shot. He's spotted us and he's bracing to lunge. If Dean yells run, I will run. It's very spooky. You can see the babies, smell them or see them in as they're coming down. Ah, that one got away. Good, good, good. Fortunately, in nature, some do survive and they will return here as adults to lay more eggs. Their progeny will also run the same gauntlet past the crabs and the crocs for this will always be their way of life at Crab Island.